the design is really important, the messaging is really important, what is said in the words. The simplicity of the website is almost more important than having like a really fancy design. Like you can have a very simple design that's really simple to use. Um, and for those people that like, maybe they're building the website internally, I always say like, just stay as simple as humanly possible. Cause you can build a good website if you're in that place, as long as you keep it simple with the design. Welcome to the Trust Business Podcast. Today I have Natalie Soparova, a very special guest. She's with Cloud Create. They're a website design firm. Natalie, thank you so much for being on. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. Awesome, awesome. Well, good. So today we're going to talk about how do you design a website that converts, right? This is a freaking huge topic in you know the 21st century where we're going. Everything, almost all of our traffic drives through our websites and online these days. So what do you do? How do you go about that so it converts? It's a very hot topic. So let's start off. Um, tell me your background and kind of how you got into this website and design business. So I got into design actually all the way back in 2008. So oh, I've wow. been in, yeah, I've been in the industry basically since it started. Right around the financial crash. Did I have anything? Yes, yeah. totally. That was, um, I didn't realize it was rough. Yeah. Looking back, I realized it was rough because um, just finding a job in that market was interesting. Mm -hmm. um, but I got really lucky and I actually found a job at a design agency. Nice. And um, it was just amazing. Like it was right after WordPress and Shopify had come out. Um, which a lot of your audience probably are, they, they know it. I love Shopify. I watched a podcast with the CEO or one of the founders, and it's just an incredible, incredible company. Totally, anyway. yeah, yeah. It's an amazing business and it's an amazing platform. So Shopify is for e-commerce, and then WordPress is usually what we recommend for like service-based businesses. And um, anyways, it was just, a, it was a great time to get into it because of all these new softwares coming out. So I got to learn like on the ground as all the developers were kind of freaking out of like, how do we use this? And we used it completely incorrectly in the beginning in a lot of ways, <laughs> yep. um, but it was a really exciting time. So that's where I kind of started. And I worked for multiple agencies throughout the years, various different businesses doing the same thing. What's your background like before getting into the web design in 08? Yeah, actually it was uh, random. It was art. I mean, it's not that random, but I didn't go into the workforce thinking I was going to be a web developer. Mm -hmm. I really went in just trying to get a job at the time yeah. with an art degree, essentially. Yeah. That was like my only background was fine art. That, that makes so much sense, though, because art, you kind of use this creative eye, and then you're jumping into web design. Same thing. What's that creative eye look like there? So that exactly. makes sense. Exactly. And that was so interesting because I actually got to be like, okay, how do I turn something that looks beautiful on like, you know, within Photoshop or whatever, um, you know, web design software we were building in, which was Firefox for, or not Firefox, sorry. Um, Never mind. Cut yeah. that out. I forgot what it's even called. It was a different program. Yeah. But um, anyways, like, how do you take that and then actually code it into existence? And back in the day, like, everything was hand coded in tables for those who know how that works. Wow. It was really complicated, annoying, um, but really fun for me at the time. Right. So, um, like I said, getting into this uh, space at that time when it was just kind of in this changing um, time place was really amazing. Wow. Yeah, so that that was the I brought kind of the design and then had to learn the code while I was working. So you okay, so you start in from scratch, you're learning the design, learning the coding, which like you said was more complicated. Technology has obviously made that better and easier like yes. it has in many areas in our lives. Totally. Um, okay, so you do that. So then how does that segue into now you own your own business, you have employees and you're doing website design and creation for people. How does that segue over to do, getting off on your own like that? <laughs> Totally. So it was pretty early in my career that I realized that you could make more money like on the side of my agency jobs. Yeah. I was like, wow, I can sell a whole website for the same that I was making in whatever amount of time at, at a you know regular job. Right. So I started freelancing relatively early on and um, <clears throat> I really had a bit of like a freelancer mindset in the way that I was like, oh, you know, whatever comes my way, I'll just make some extra money. Yeah. And it was like that for a really long time. Like I don't consider really that I owned a business during that time because it really was just like extra money and like, you know, it was on and off. It wasn't consistent. I wasn't really building a business at that time. Yeah. And the big change really was my husband, Darren. He, um, when we got together, he has a much better business acumen than I had. 
So I actually thought I was doing really well. Yeah. I was like, wow, like I have all these clients, like I'm making good money. I felt like I was doing amazing. Yeah. And he was like, hey, we should actually make you like profitable. And I was like, what are you talking about? I'm making money. Yeah, what's profit? Yeah. Totally, <laughs> exactly. I was like, I thought I was doing so great. And he came in with just this much bigger dream. And that was really inspiring to me because as much as I did believe that I could do it, I had never really thought through how that could really be done. Yeah. You know, so having him being like, hey, like, why don't we do a lot bigger and why don't we do bigger, better projects? And why don't we, for one thing, start getting clients on our own? Because a lot of my clients were through other agencies. Right. Which was, t I thought that was a great setup. I didn't yeah. have to do sales. Yeah. Like, you He's know. probably kind of like, you know, that's kind of weird because <laughs> that's their client. You shouldn't be grabbing it. Totally, okay. yeah. totally. <laughs> he saw that. I didn't see that at the time. Yeah. So, and that's like one advice for any, especially the creative people. Yeah. A lot of creative people are that way. You don't totally know your worth and you don't know how to talk about your worth to yeah. other people. Um, so to like creatives out there, if you like having a coach or a mentor to yeah. help you like balance out your own like passion for just building stuff yeah. and actually bring that business viewpoint, it's really helpful. Yeah, well that's that's an because there's there's multi there's all these skills, right? And all these buckets. So you're really good at website design and the product. Great, you're great at that. But then there's this whole hat almost, which is okay, business. Yes. And how do you make a business out of that? What are all these things that go into that? And sometimes people, that's one of the struggles that people have is like going from being a really good roofer, a really good plumber, a really good electrician, a really good web designer to owning, having your own business. So there are ways to learn it on your own and go out there and learn it. It can be, it's a lot, there's a lot that goes into that or like you did, amazing. I mean, your husband happens to understand that and then partnering together and bringing both sides into it. So for some people, partnering is the answer, but that's awesome. Totally. And that was really lucky for me because like I said, I really thought I was doing well and I couldn't really dream of that next big step. It was too hard for me yeah. to envision, you know, I just loved the clients. I loved the work. So like I didn't need anything else. And he was like, but you can, you can do your work so much better if you really had your own clientele sold them from took them from the project from beginning to end you know rather than just doing the end where you're designing for them and um, so his viewpoint on that was really helpful and that's where we really started building a business yeah and that's how we started hiring developers and like the work became so much better yeah. because we could sell it for more and deliver better products I love it and that's it's an interesting thing because like the most sometimes uh, there's a saying like the most important things that you know you need to do your next steps to grow to be better to be bigger these kind of things usually are things you might not even know are there yes. they're the things you literally just don't even know so the ability to have somebody from the outside or to read a book or watch something and then take that in it's so important to get outside perspective in order to grow as a person so anyway i love that okay good so so he comes in business acumen he's like let's do this thing you're like okay and then when was that and then you know how how kind of tell me about your journey and then how where you're at now with this thing yeah totally so um I mean, let me think. The biggest first step that we did yeah. was cutting ties with the various different agencies that we were working with, which was absolutely terrifying. Because right. at this She's point- like, this is where I get all my work, yeah. 100%, and yeah. all my income came from them. Like, it wasn't like, oh, I had like some clients or whatever, like the very occasional one, but all my income came from them. So cutting ties with them and letting them know that we're no longer doing that kind of work was extremely terrifying. And I definitely was against it at first. Yep. And for the next month, I resented the decision, yeah. um, but it was totally the right thing. And the funny thing is, shortly thereafter, we landed our largest ever client at the time. And that was the moment where it shifted for me, where I was like, wow, like if this project had been sold by an agency and we did the work, we probably would have gotten like 20% of the amount that we got now. Right. Um, taking <clears throat> this client and we did a great job for them, very thorough, beautiful website. Um, and the client was super happy and they did amazing. We increased their conversions actually, like I think that one was by six, 60%. So that was like from two to 3%. I don't remember the exact amounts, but it was noticeable. Yeah. You know, when it comes to conversions, you take someone from a 2% conversion, which is pretty average in the industry and bring them up to four, for example, you just doubled their income. Right. Even though these percentages sound so small. Right. So that was like such a huge win. And that's where it really became real for me. Like, 
like this could be a real business. I, I understand it now. I see it now. Wow. Um, whereas I had at one point been like absolutely arguing with my husband that there was no way we could sell a website for like the prices he was talking about. Right. He, he was talking like 10,000, 20,000, why not? And I was like, no way. So, but then we ended up doing it. And that right. was like, it was such a testament to like, wow, like, we can do this. Right. And the answer is, of course, I'm sure you guys figured out, make sure that you're driving a lot of value into that. Yes. So if you're going to charge 20, man, it better be a lot of value. But if you can take someone from a 2% conversion, like you said, to, okay, now they're converting it 7%, whatever that might be, it might sound small, but that, like you said, now they have three times as many leads from their website bucket. Exactly. You know, never know what industry you're working for. Like in my industry in roofing, if you increase the conversions like that, these are big ticket items. These are big exactly. roof, big sales. So yeah. really moves the needle on that. Um, so very, very true on that. Where, where are you guys at now in terms of like the agency and stuff? Like where's your business at right now in size or in whatever? Yeah. So right now it's me, my husband, and then we have four developers. Nice. And I still do all of the sales and I do all the project management, nice. <clears throat> which I'm sure this is something that we're going to delegate at some point, sure. but it's definitely like that customer relationship is where I feel very important, yeah. you know, like, and that's a disconnect that happens in a lot of agency is exactly between sales and production. Yeah. Everyone's been sold a dream and then when it eventually gets built, they're unhappy. And yeah. I don't know how it is in the roofing it's the business. the exact same thing. Really? You say all this, man, trust roofing. They're going to do it like this and everything. And it's going to boom, boom. And then if in production, they don't come to the table, like that's where it's really at, right? Yeah. And of course us, like we, you know, that's something that we have challenges with too. Making sure that whatever the expectations are here are then met or exceeded over here. And that's a struggle for, I think, any business. But, you know, figuring out how to set them right here and then follow through with them here, which is why awesome, you know, you as the owner in project managing, you're able to have so much control over that aspect and really, I'm sure, have really high um, customer satisfaction because of that. Absolutely, absolutely. That. And that was, for me, also one thing that was tough to relinquish control of. How do I relinquish control of the site? Because when I started, I literally was like, I'm doing every roof myself. Yes. Like, I am on there, I'm being the foreman, and I'm shingling away. And I'm, <laughs> and I'm talking to the homeowner, I'm doing the final walkthrough, I'm magneting it, I'm making sure there's not a single nail left behind, right? And that was my mindset, which is a good mindset. Yes. But then in order to grow, you know, I had to figure out, like, okay, how do I get a foreman to have that mind. How do I get a project manager to have that mindset? Like that's how you have to start going at it and we're far from perfect, but that's definitely what we're working toward. So, okay, good, I love that. So you have four designers, you're running the project management, the sales, your husband's helping on the business end. So that's amazing. So then talk to me like as someone who's, you know, doing like how many websites do you guys do? I don't know, like a month. I know they take a little bit to build. Yeah, we, I think it averages about five projects per month on a rotating basis, obviously. Yeah, you're at any given time working Exactly, on. exactly. Cool. At any given time, it's about five, which is a really good number. Yeah. Um, and we are slowly relinquishing more and more pieces from me. Like the first sure. time where I had a developer actually build a website and they did, they did a better job than I could have done. Isn't that like, amazing? So like amazing. I have these roofs, I have these roofs go on, and I actually realized I was like, these freaking roofers are way better roofers than I was. I mean, you know, like I, I was really good. I had a lot of care factor, but I'm like, just you know, whatever. Totally, yeah. totally, because they're so expert, and that's been all doing they're it for doing. 15 years. That's all they've been doing. You know, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So that was like really amazing. So that's kind of in the place where we are right now. We're bringing on more people, making sure that the that everything is still very streamlined. Our yep. client communication is still like number one, yeah. um, which is something that when people first meet me and I tell them about our business and they've had, you know, they have trouble with their websites they're trying to solve, it's yeah. usually something they're like, oh my God, like their people, they don't talk to them for like a week or they won't update them or they won't answer them. Yeah. It's such like a simple thing to put in, but it makes all the difference. I went over it at, we did an all staff meeting this morning and I was just going over like, you know, last year how we did goals and stuff moving forward this year and stuff. And one of the things we went over was just almost all issues that we have as a company are communication issues, right. either to the client or internally, especially as you grow. Because, okay, good, that sales rep's got to turn over everything and really communicate to production. The production's got to communicate to the permitting department. Permitting to, you know, and these little extra steps of communication, that extra phone call, that extra this, sometimes can be the difference between a satisfied client, everything's rolling great, to there's a problem. And it literally was just that extra phone call. So something we talk about a lot and try to lean into. It's so, so key. Um, totally. Yeah. 
But so okay, so let's talk about like on the like on the granular level, like what what do you what makes a website convert well? Actually, first of all, what what are your main client bases? Like what kind of client bases are you guys into? Sure. So <clears throat> we have two main client bases. The one end is e-commerce. Yep. So this is where we do custom Shopify websites. Yep. And um, to answer your question, kind of on this in, in the, at the same time, when it comes to Shopify, the conversions are you do different things as far as like a, a um, service-based business, right? Yeah. So just to take up Shopify first, like obviously the design has to be great. That's a really important thing. And the, the reason why that's important is really just kind of on a wavelength uh, level. People like to look at beautiful things. If you open a website, even if the product is great, but it looks like it's from the 90s or whatever, you're automatically not going to trust it, right? Right, right. It sends signals. Like yeah. I know that sometimes I'll get on a website to buy something and I'm literally like, and I'm going on to Google over here, and I'm like, is this website safe? And I go to one of those little safe search. Oh, yes, it is. Okay, fine. Like, is that the first thing you want your clients to think or want to go to? When I go into, I mean, a, like a genuine, like, you know, you can tell. You're like, you know, I don't even ask that question. I go, yeah, I'm buying a belt. Good. This website is perfectly legit. I find that in a lot of construction industry websites. Hey, we'll go there. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, <laughs> totally. No, that's exactly right. So the design is really important. Yeah. Um, the messaging is really important. What is said in the words. The simplicity of the website is almost more um, important than having like a really fancy design. Like you can have a very simple design that's really simple to use. Um, and for those people that like, maybe they're building the website internally within their company or like somebody that's not um, an expert in web design, they, you know, there's various different tools to use. Right. I always say like, just stay as simple as humanly possible. Cause you can build a good website if you're in that place. Right. Um, as long as you keep it simple with the design. So just like very simple navigation, very very simple communication say exactly what you're doing right, it's kind of like less guess. is more like if you yes. go on to like apple's website right and apple obviously is like very good at marketing and yes marketing. They, they know what they're doing in that area you go on there it's like boom one big message it's like the brand new ipad blah or whatever yes. it is you're like whoa apple and then you know some little buttons right and i'm not like the biggest album i like apple but you, you scroll down and you're like Boom, there's the iPad. Boom, there's the what? Like, it's been, it's just simple, one thing Very at a time. Very simple. And theirs yeah. is extremely on that end of the spectrum. Every business is different. Like, my business, I feel like I need to communicate a little bit more on it, but I agree with that of like simplicity. What's the message you want to send out? Because we only have so much attention span. Yes. If something is too like jumbled and crazy, I might just click out and find something that's a little bit simpler. Like, totally. hey, I need to buy a, a computer. I don't want to be on this one. Let me just go on to Apple. Oh, good. There's the damn computer or whatever the thing is. 100%. Yeah. So if you can think from a mindset of like, okay, what's the biggest question that my um, customer has? Or what's the biggest thing that they want to see on your website? You have to think with expectations. Yeah. Because if somebody clicks on, this is a really important thing when it comes to like people that are advertising too. If you have an ad for something and you're clicking through to a web page, Page that has nothing to do with your ad even if the web page is amazing people are gonna bounce because they're not expect they want to expect what they uh, find what they're expecting they want right. to find what they're expecting right so the ad copy's got a link into whatever they're landing exactly on the side. so like yeah. if somebody's looking for a roofing company and they click on your Google link or whatever and they go through and they don't immediately feel validated that it's a roofing company then that's not good. They're going to bounce. Exactly. Right. So you just want to make your your message has to be so clear like we do roofs for blah or whatever. Right. Yeah. Got it. Makes um, sense. Yeah, and in that regard it's the same kind of with our other so that is our Shopify client base and then we also have our service based businesses and they're also custom designed. Usually we use WordPress just because it has so many third party integrations yeah. as far as like, you know, CMSs and all these kinds of things. Yeah. Um, but it that part stands the same. You want the messaging to be really clear. Definitely use aesthetics when you can. Right. Um, but it really just needs to be very clear, very easy to navigate, and fast loading is a right. big deal too. What kind of service based businesses have you have you worked with or work with a lot? Really all kinds. We have um financial services based businesses we have some coaching people um we do lean a little more towards shopify yeah. so we have tons of e-commerce clients yeah. like we have anything from diapers to surfboards to supplements like yeah. we're not really niched into any particular uh industry Just kind of those two realms yeah um one thing that i was gonna i was gonna say is something that i feel like is really important i actually need to improve this on my website right now disclaimer but is when you scroll down, like on a service-based business, like construction or coaching or whatever it is, 
using like genuine photos and content that you actually grab. Yes. So like on my website, you know, like you scroll down and you can see a photo of me. You can see a photo of my team, right? And I, I said, I need to add some more. I need to uh, improve that on my end. But I see some business where you go on and all you see is clip art. All you, or not clip art, but you know, like stock, uh, photos. stock photos. All yes. you see is stock photos. And you as a consumer, like I can tell I see a stock photo. And as soon as I see a stock photo, and I might be, I'm not all consumers think that way, but as soon as I see a stock photo, I think, okay, that's a stock photo. And that's a little bit of a, a tiny red flag, but it's not huge, but small, right? Whereas if you see a genuine, you know, it's a guy wearing the trust roofing shirt, banging the shingle away, there's the owners, there's the marketing team, there's the, the oh, you see the people. That all of a sudden gives you this thing of like, oh, okay, I can trust this company. They're real. They're out there. So doing that in your website and building your company's value, like, hey, no, we don't just no, we're real. Here we are. Being able to do that on your website just with the subtle fact that, hey, the photo content you have on there, I feel like is really key. And that's something that I see a lot of you know roofing companies who have, I don't know, or in other service-based businesses who have older websites or whatever kind of struggle with, but just having that, hey, this is our company's content on my website. Totally, that's such a good point. Yeah. We actually did a website for a construction company and they were New York based, but they were doing construction in Florida. And so they didn't have like fancy camera equipment or anything like that. So they were like, hey, can you just like use stock photos? This is the services. And I was like, no way. Like I would rather have your, you know, manager take iPhone photos and use those yeah. rather than stock photos. And so they did. They literally had like their person that was on site take pictures of like as they were building the house. Yeah. And it turned out so amazing. Like it wow. was because they built like this neighborhood or whatever. So they actually had this like we could put together this little um, strip of images, this little gallery of like, okay, here's what it looked when they were doing the foundation and here they're putting all these different parts together. Yeah. And it turned out awesome because it was so genuine. Yeah, and it's amazing. And, and the thing on this really, and it becomes like an overall concept of like what is, and here we are in 2024 where this is like just so important. What is your digital footprint like? What is it like? Where is it at? And I see too many, in my opinion, home service industry people and just business people who are still sleeping on this point but it is so key. So like us, for example, like right now we're doing this podcast. We'll post this on our YouTube. We'll post this on our Facebook. And then Joe's looking at using us maybe for a commercial roof or for a tower or something. They click on our Facebook and they're like, oh, they posted a, a podcast today and there's the owner. Let me, let me check this out, right? And it just gives them that trust. Here they are. They're putting out content. They're talking about business. Okay, right? And it's just what is your digital footprint look like, right? And, and people's buying journeys are so interesting. Like I was walking in Home Depot yesterday. I was there to buy four two by sixes. I was bringing to jobs like randomly. I was doing this yesterday. But and I'm walking by and a Home Depot employee walks up to me. He's like, hey, you're Robin, right? And I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm Robin. I was wearing my shirt. And he's like, oh, my goodness, yeah. I've been watching your podcast. I've been your stuff, blah, blah, blah. You guys came out and did a uh, quote on my roof last week. I got it from Dieter. I'm like, oh, awesome. How did Dieter take care of you? And he's like, oh, Dieter, he was good. So I'm like, okay, good. Well, you know, I'm, I'm putting in a good word for him. He's going to take great care of you. You know, go if you do a job with us, we'll take great care of you. He's like, okay, good. Yeah, we'll do and we'll see. I don't know if that guy's going to necessarily go with us or not. I went in my chat and I told Dieter, hey, Dieter, I talked to this guy. I gave you a good word. You better close this, right? But uh, but just that factor of like this guy's researching my company, checking us out, and he's like watching podcasts and he's like looking at content, looking at YouTube videos. If your company has uh, hardly any Facebook presence or it's just posts, just little photos, hey, here's another review or hey, here's another uh, roof, here's another roof. Those are fine too. But like getting video content out there, getting high quality content that really pushes your brand, your message, what you're about, get that on your website. We do blogs. Um, you know, we're, we're, we haven't done it yet, but we're going to get this podcast on our website. So I want people to be able to see, oh, yes. good, this is a trust business podcast, right? But building up your digital footprint because when people go on a shopping experience, especially like mine, it's really big ticket. You're talking about spending 20, 30 in a situation of commercial, you could be over a hundred grand, right? When you're spending that kind of money, you wanna really know who you're dealing with, who you're doing business with. And in some cases, the person who has the better digital footprint can win in that post bid bidding process when they're looking at four different options and they research who, do, who researches out the best. So that is just so, so key. So, um, so true, so true. And I'll just add to that really yeah. fast because this is something that I've seen having been in this industry for so long that really gets me excited. Yeah. So back in the day, most of the time, the largest brand would just win, you know? So coming in as a new e-commerce company was kind of hard because people had a lot more trust in the enormous brands, right? Yep. They had the brand recognition, they had the trust of the consumer. And so automatically you were, you didn't want to try and compete with like Nike and stuff necessarily. Um, yeah. it, it was just harder. It, my, people's mindset wasn't totally used to that, right. these new brands. 
And now the direct to consumer brand, you know, ones that don't go into the stores necessarily, they right. just sell directly to the consumer. They right. have exploded oh, and yeah. people's trust actually becomes more because of social media, because of being yeah. able to see the product, see the owner, see the people behind the work. There, I find that the consumer has kind of shifted to wanting to only buy or more likely buy the enormous brands. Of course, yeah. they'll still do that. Do it, yeah. But the smaller brand, the, you know, um, private businesses, the smaller business, people like putting their money there and they can align their values. Um, you know, there's just so much benefit to new business owners today being able to use social media and all these kinds of tools to really get your brand out there yeah. and actually take a little bit of market share. There's, there's a different kind of market there for sure. Yeah. People are like, hey, you know, I could buy that, but man, I want to find that like small, homegrown, like who makes those shoes? Well, they do it and they do it in this way and like, whatever, and I see that more and more, hey, what kind of shoes are you? Oh, I'm wearing the, these, these are the from there and there, and it's this whole thing. There's a guy, I forget the company name, but uh, he, he does watches, and he started the watch thing like out of his, you probably know the guy I'm thinking of maybe. Anyway, he started the watch business like out of his kitchen, right? He's like, man, I wanna do the coolest watch company ever, and he had this like dream, and this guy, just he has millions of views on YouTube now, and these watches are just going off the shelf, and he has this whole movement about it, and this whole like idea about you know this whole culture about buying the watch, and this whole thing. And yeah, I'm just sure he's just crushing and succeeding, and the watches are like high quality, I'm sure, and all this. But he's just came in and crushed it, and that's like the, to your point, to what you're saying. There is no like this is the most opportune time I would say in history for entrepreneurs, people who are interested in getting their own product out there, doing their own business, creating on something. There's just the opportunity out there is like endless, limitless. So true, so true. And it's so exciting being able to work with these business owners because they're so passionate, you yeah. know? Not to say that it's easy, it's still hard. Oh, it's super hard. In, yeah. You have to have grit and all this stuff, but yeah. it's so much fun to work with these people that are so passionate about their projects. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, good. So if you had like for for a business owner that you were talking to who is like interested in making their website better, the design better, something like that, would be like, a, the, a piece of advice just simple like you said simplicity is yeah. key so that's good um, but like a piece of advice to help it convert better help it be better or something that you constantly are giving to your clients or going over to them when you're selling or, or whatever um, and, may, mean, and maybe that you see is out on like websites currently that you're going to be doing a revamp on yeah the biggest thing which is just hilarious to me that this is the point and I did briefly go over it earlier but it's just like so many business owners can look at their website and this is just out, which is the fact that like, when you go to the homepage on mobile, especially very important since 90% of traffic is usually from mobile. Yeah. Um, you have to know exactly what you're selling and who you're selling to based on that little piece of screen that you get to see within ideally the first two seconds of getting on the website. So like, for example, if you're selling uh, jewelry or whatever, right? and somebody goes to the website and they don't see, maybe there's a lady with jewelry on, but you can't see like, we sell jewelry. Like the text, like jewelry, best jewelry in town or whatever. Exactly, exactly. Like that is the most important thing. And it creates an enormous bounce rate when people cannot easily tell what, what you do and who you're doing it for. Ideally, you can even kind of put that in. Like who is right. the client like, that you're trying to Who's your ideal client reach? base? Are you going for a high-end client? Yes. Are you going for like, economical you're going for people who are doing weddings like what is that niche whatever it is that you're shooting for bam target it that way the ones you want boom I got you exactly that's something that is surprise because people like to get creative yeah and they like to be fun with words and like come up with a cool tagline or whatever that's all super great but like don't use that little space that you have that little bit of attention that you get for like one second yeah. after your page is loaded to make it kind of fuzzy or unclear what you do you know, being designed for mobile is so so key and I've seen I've seen amazing businesses I've seen businesses that are like they do 30 or 40 million in revenue and they're in like the supply industries, the ones I'm talking about. So like in the supply industry, you're not as like needing that website like me or moving totally. So I understand why, but like I'm on the website and I'm literally like, oh my gosh, I'm on mobile. And I'm like, what the, it's not designed for mobile, like all the little small points. It's like, it literally was built maybe not in the nineties quite, but definitely <laughs> whoever designed it was thinking back and then, and you're just like, what? So anyway, but definitely I would recommend, I remember with this company here, when I went ahead and invested, and I invested in a company, I knew that they had premium websites. I knew that they were high-end, I knew they were expensive. They're a hook agency, I'll give them a quick shout out because I love those guys. I love those but guys, I, they're but, great. 
Oh, you know them. I know them. They're aw- oh yes. my god! See, okay, they are awesome. Now we're going on a hook tangent here. They're awesome at social media and their social media game and all of that. They're incredible at that aspect and building that digital footprint so they're known in their space. But anyway, you know, I knew going in they were not going to be a cheap website necessarily. Yeah. They were going to be a high end product, but I knew the amount of business I was trying to do. I knew my sales reps were going to be out there trying to get good leads, try to crush it. I'm like, I want my website. I don't want that to be a thing holding me back. Totally. If I can, you know, take something and make sure it doesn't hold me back, I definitely don't want it to be the website. So, you know, I invested with them and they built a great site. And I mean, from building that site to now, I mean, our revenue is just boom, 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 boom. And the whole way, I mean, it's not like the website does everything, right? Of course, all the other work is what matters, but I know for a fact it's not the thing holding me back. It can't be an excuse. I know if someone pops on it, they'll be able to convert, they'll decent, all this. So anyway, shout out to them. But I would just recommend any business owner, you know, make sure your website is good. Don't cut a corner on your website oh, design and on how good it is and all that good stuff. So anyway, okay, good. Well, man, we will we'll wrap up. But thank you so much for coming on. This was amazing. Thank so you. insightful. And I love, I love your story of just, you know, boom and creating your own business. You have four designers now. Uh, what what are the goals like for you moving forward with this thing? You said you wanted to kind of look at maybe phasing up a little bit more, delegating totally. more. Totally. Like ideally, I'd get into the points where I was, I'd still, I don't think I could not be like, you know, quality control. Like I'll always have an oversight on the delivery because that is my talent or whatever. Um, but ideally I would be a lot more sales fa- facing, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like just a little bit less on the project management. That's yeah. kind of my next step up. Yeah. Um, and as far as overall goals, just see how big we can make it, you know? Awesome. I love mm-hmm. it. Okay, good. Well, thank you so much for being on, Natalie. Um, if anybody uh, is interested in reaching out to you or contacting you to, you know, get help with their website or learn more about you or anything like that, how should they go about finding you? Uh, so they can look at the cloudcreate.com. Um, that's the easiest way and they can just book a call with me and yeah, that's probably the way. That's awesome. The we'll, we'll drop it. We'll drop a link to that down in the description. Thank awesome. you so much for being on Natalie. Yes. Thank okay. you. Thank you.